for the last 15 years, I've been presenting a programme for the BBC called More or Less, which is all about making sense of the world through numbers. Uh, we've interviewed Phil Tetlock a number of times, uh, but I became a little bit worried that all too often people were interpreting the programme as just being debunking, just being a smackdown of lies and of misleading information. And so I wanted to make a more uh, positive and active case that statistics can actually tell us something about the world. They're a vital tool for making sense of the world around us if we use it right. I suppose in a way, there's a little bit of sympathy with uh, the Good Judgment Project's view of forecasting. There's a lot of cynicism about forecasting, but if you do it right, it's possible. Similarly, there's a lot of cynicism about statistics, and there's a lot of bad use of statistics out there. But I think it can be done well, and the data detective is, is making that case, trying to show people how to do it. Anybody who's been paying attention, certainly for the last five years, has noticed that a lot of what we believe, we believe because we want to believe it, uh, because we're determined to, to make uh, the numbers bend to our view of reality. And in particular, because we want to feel part of a political tribe. We want to feel that we're, we're on the right side. And it's been impossible to do any statistical work looking at the real world, trying to clarify the challenges that people face in the real world without also facing up to people's preconceptions and their biases. And so my, my sense is that if you want to be smarter about statistics, you need to also be a little bit wiser about yourself. And there's one other thing I would add, a lot of this is framed in terms of, oh, don't be fooled by the statistics. Don't be misled by dubious statistics. That's fine, but also don't be misled by yourself. And that is why there's so much behavioral science, so much psychology in the data detective. I was fascinated by the fact that uh, open-mindedness was a key quality of good forecasting. I mean, th this is something that was hinted at in Tetlock's work back in 2005, uh, the, the expert political judgment uh, book, uh, which I, I think is really wonderful. Um, but I was also interested in what people do when they are proved wrong by events. So having an open mind, being open to new information, being willing to admit that you were wrong, turns out to lead to being a better forecaster. You give better forecasts. And that's true. It turns out that's true even if you're not allowed to update your forecasts, um, but even more so if you are allowed to update your forecasts. But I was also interested in people who are just wrong, they're demonstrably wrong, and yet they still won't change what they think. They'll still find a way to, to enter into this stage of advanced denial. And I wanted to, to explore that and, and think about well, what are the tendencies, both in the environment and in the individual, that lead to that incredible stubbornness, uh, and how can we overcome them? I think there's a tendency for people to either view the world um, through gut instinct. You know, I just know this is how it should be. Um, this is what I expect to happen. Often this is what I want to happen. Or alternatively, you can do it purely through the data. Uh, I've, I've got a model, I've run the numbers, and this is what the model's telling me. And as a nerd, I, I tend to favor the data-driven approach. But something that I and make the case for in the book is that you really need both. I think a good forecaster needs both because there's always stuff that's just not in the data, the stuff that the numbers can't capture because you can't measure everything and you can't analyze everything. And the numbers will be systematically misleading sometimes in one way or another. They'll be missing something, uh, something really important. Uh, so the, the challenge is to, to combine the gut instinct, the, the intuition with the data. Uh, now, that's something I encourage people to do in the book. I encourage people to do that in everyday life. But I think it becomes particularly interesting and particularly sharp uh, when you're trying to make forecasts because you, you've got this data series. You've got a clearly quantifiable forecast you're trying to hit by a clear date. Um, you, you did it or you did not do it. All of that, it's all of the numbers. 
And yet so much of what makes a good forecast is having that understanding, that grasp of what is actually not reflected in the data too. And merging those two things, I think, is not easy at all. But, well, that's why not everyone's a super forecaster. In addition to all of the good advice that forecasters normally get from a good judgment project, from, from the super forecasting book, I would stress three things. Uh, the, the three C's, if you like. The three C's are uh, calm, context, and curiosity. So what do I mean by calm? Calm is simply uh, not being carried away by your immediate emotional response. So much of the way we see the world, the way we're filtering data, is driven by our, our fears, our hopes, our desire to be right. Uh, and, and that's fine. I mean, I think emotions are important. We're all human beings. Um, but you need to be able to step to one side or step back from that emotional response. And the easiest way to do that is simply to notice it, to acknowledge it. I'm looking at the numbers, I'm looking at the headlines, and I'm, and I'm feeling something. Notice that and then go back and, and look a second time. So the first C was calm. The second C was context. In context uh, is sometimes called uh, getting the outside view or getting the base rate. This is something I think a good super forecaster will know a lot about. But more broadly, this sense of um, numbers not existing in isolation. Like what, what, what's going on? What's the trend? Is this number going up or is this going down? How does this, this situation compare to other situations? Can I find useful comparators that let me... Um, you know, put it into perspective. And very often we leap to conclusions with no idea of, of what the context is. And without context, you do all the analysis you like and, and you're going to learn nothing. Uh, what was the third C? So we said calm, we said context. Third C is curiosity. The third C is just going out there and being interested in the world, hoovering up information and just wanting to, to understand what's going on. And wanting to learn more, to, to draw a map in your mind of what's happening, rather than simply looking for ammunition to prove that you're right in some kind of argument. So calm, context, curiosity, it's easy to remember. And I think they're useful habits of mind to bolster what any good forecaster should already be doing.